Hi, this is John Leone. I'm president of Radio Listeners, ElectricEasel.com, Inc., and I'm Radio Listener. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse the cough, it just won't go away. Um, the, uh, today we're, is the second video in the series, and what we're doing is we're taking Google's Android Notepad tutorial, and we're not really embellishing it all. We're we're trying to go verbatim, and I'm just, you know, uh, giving my spin on it. And it's kind of like I'm teaching it as I'm learning it. It um, <laughs> it's something I've never done before, and uh, but that that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going through the tutorial with you, and like in making these videos. Like this one in particular had, uh, geez, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 takes. And before that, reviewing and reviewing and going through it. And and still, you know, I'm still grasping certain parts of it. And, you know, I'm by no means an expert, but I saw there was no video on the content. I thought it was very good content. So I'm producing a video. And we'll see how it goes. Anyway wasting time um, what we have uh, we're doing if you're following along from the notes where I showed you it is on the Google Android site um, this is exercise one steps three four and five and what you basically do is you work on the layout a little bit now the layout you know, if you're familiar with XML, um, yeah, namespaces come naturally to you. This one is called Android, and it's from schemasandroid.com. And uh, we'll scroll over here, and, you know, that's the basic schema. And all these Android tags are basically commands to the operating system to acknowledge and interpret what is being uh, given to it and wrap content in width and height is used throughout all of these now uh, what we do with the list view the list view is actually when you get the running application you'll get a screen and the first screen will say no notes yet or whatever or write some notes or so we're going to show you how to change that to whatever you want but the uh but if there are notes if this id does return a list so if android id um returns a cursor to a list then it'll process it in this fashion of just wrapping the content and processing it so this is the condition over here. Now um, this text view is a condition that Android ID, the cursor, um, returns the empty set. In that case, then you want to wrap the content again. But what you want to do is display a string. Now these are like global variables, these strings. And this no notes is the global string that will return. And it's a constant. Or it might be able to be changed programmatically. I'm not positive on that. Um, but in any event, say you want to change what it is. If you go into res and then you go into values and open strings.xml, Let's do that. We'll use this with the interface. This part of the graphical interface, I understand. Um, it has app name and it's notepad version 1. And here's that no notes. This is that global string. And I changed it. It says no notes yet. I say, why don't you write some notes? And I put a smiley face. <laughs> and uh, okay, be that as it may, that's where that comes from. Now the second part of this, they want you to create your own file. So what you do here is you go to new and file and we want 
one and layout and what do we call this one? Uh, notes row and XML. And it's a little slow because I'm running a lot of overhead. I'm trying to crashing issues, but um, I think I've diagnosed that as uh, the driver for the graphics board. It's a pretty good graphics board, but uh, the, with the screen capture and uh, you know a web browser and stuff open at the same time, it uh, put the load. Memory is no problem, but uh, it does seem to use a lot of processor. And uh, I guess just the overhead and the medium. But anyway, I'm gonna just simply cut and paste this. And we'll go over it. Um, and this is standard XML header. And uh, here's the text view, and it's all like self contained in its own tag with the closing, self closing, and everything. And again, it's just wrap content. And this is the schema. But what this is is a little interesting because what this will do. If there is no ID, well, the way it works in a finished product, um, they have um, the list view that we just saw. So it would be like a, a list of notes. You would have note one, note two, note three, note four, and then there's a button down at the bottom, and it would say either create new or I forget the actual wording of it, <coughs> or delete or something like that. So you when you click create it doesn't have an ID so this says if there's no ID create one and if you refer back to what we did in the database when the database gets a new query it's the type ID is an auto number uh, primary key so it will it's telling the operating system create this for us so that we could do it. Now whether it uses a temp variable at first or I'm not quite sure of the underpinnings that much. It's not covered in the material. That's the kind of thing you learn from practice. Um, because it probably doesn't actually uh, create the true ID until the transaction is committed. But that's an assumption on my part. But it's saying this variable text one will handle the rest. Now what this text one variable uh, must contain is in, in the screen when you're looking at an individual note you will have a title and a message uh, or content. I forget what it's actually called in the database but they're both uh, text fields and they're not null. So this text one passes the parsing of it um, and it's whatever it is contained in this variable now this variable is in our Java under uh, well no it's not in there yet because we didn't save first you gotta save it and then if you look at our Java there's a class ID and it has um, a text one variable and this text one variable here it's shown as an int but uh, so is no notes this is no notes that global string and it's shown as an int here um, and this is a hexadecimal setting it must be a unique uh, hex encoder or something and uh, anyway we're almost out of time and that's about all the material we want to cover so we covered three four and five um, in the next video, we'll actually get to the code uh, behind a little bit. We'll work with uh, source. And this has little exclamation points here and there, but they'll go away. We'll show you how. Okay, thanks for your time. This is Radio Listener of Radio Listeners, electricdiesel.com. And uh, thanks for your time. And stay tuned for the next in the series. And I apologize for my voice, but. It apparently is not in the best shape at the moment. Okay, thank you. Bye.